Happy Thursday, friends. Uh, we got a big week. A matter of fact, I had to really trim down what I wanted to share with you. So what I am sharing is important. I think cool, as usual. Good numbers here. Uh, but the big part to talk about, guys, is just what a good week. Um, Freddie Mac, which, by the way, if you have or have not noticed, uh, they've no longer started listing their points. It used to say like 0.6 to 0.8, somewhere in there as far as discount points. They're no longer doing that. It doesn't mean it's not there. They're just no longer reporting it. So you got a 6.4 or below the 6.5. Why, guys? Check this out. Look at what happened yesterday. Christmas is coming early, team. Uh, what happened was Jerome Powell came out and basically said they think uh, inflation started to come down. They're going to be a little bit you know, more dovish, less hawkish. Uh, basically yesterday's or today's numbers. So, you know, maybe, maybe good old Jay Powell had a little sneak peek. I uh, basically said that they're going to raise like foregone conclusion. It's now 50 basis points this month for their next Fed hike. And they're doing so because again, inflation is showing signs of cooling guys. We've been calling this since like April or May since doing these videos. So we are really spot on. I'm not taking all the credit. I just pay a lot of money to watch to read subscriptions and, and know what's going on but we've been saying november was the peak uh technically we were off last month was the peak because they're showing numbers now coming down went from 0.63 to 0.6 yesterday so we think that's going to continue matter of fact we think it's really going to pick up steam in january so housing shelter costs is is like 40 almost 40 percent of of these inflation numbers and there's a lag on those we think come january is when you're going to start seeing the big decrease uh, for those numbers finally setting in. So if you got this lag, I mean, look what it was four months ago. It's usually about a four month lag. Look at the steep decline over here on the right. So as soon as those numbers get figured in on the inflation data, which should be in January, we'll see the inflation come down. Also, uh, just realize that again, the Fed's raised rates, you know, so fast, so much that they haven't even taken uh, the the impact of those rates haven't even truly been fr uh, filtered into the economy. So. While this has happened, it's just, again, there's still more to come in terms of pain, which is not good, right? But it certainly helps housing rates. You guys can see this. I thought this was a pretty cool chart, um, which there's a scary one coming up that looks like it. But basically, uh, on average, since 1975, when they tighten, they do it by almost five points over a 20-month period. So a year and a half, five points. Guys, we've done 3.75 just in nine months. <laughs> so in half the time, We've done about three quarters of what's normal in a period. So you can see how steep that is. Here's another depiction that kind of shows that. But look at this, guys. This is what was the scary part. Uh, your portfolio, your stock portfolios. I feel like we may have a good little run here over the next you know, 30 days. I call it the Santa Claus rally. So the stocks may have some good signs. There was, I mean, massively good yesterday with the inflation numbers. Um, and so truthfully, I threw a little money in that morning. And so far, it looks smart, right? That's one day. <laughs> but all this to say... Here's what was like the oh no moment. Uh, this is the S&P. If you guys look, and I know it might be a little blurry because we, we try to make this as big as we can. When the Fed changes their policy from you know tightening to then easing, when they kind of said, hey, we're making that shift. And I'm not saying that's what Jay Powell was announcing you know, this week. However, it's certainly starting to sound more like that shift. When that happens, the unfortunately, the stock market is, it goes down. <laughs> and so- Check. I mean, look at this. Isn't that bizarre? Look at the yellow shaded areas. That's when the Fed pivot came and it's down 36%, 48, 27, 51, 58, 35. Holy smokes. So we're not out of the woods yet, guys, from a stock market standpoint. Um, so I'm not a financial planner, not a financial advisor, not a stock market, stock broker, but I am just saying that's interesting. So here's a couple of things as far as housing that I think are worth sharing with your buyers. Uh, if you are looking to buy or if you're you're you know shopping right now, if you're, you know, whatever it is, this is, is I just thought this was interesting. The median household income for to afford the average house, which is apparently 390 uh in, in North Texas, is about 76 or pardon me, eighty-seven thousand dollars to afford that. So uh the average income or the median, median and average are two different things, but the median income, so you know, fit, you know, so, so like right there in the middle is what that median is basically saying is 76,000. So that means over half the Metroplex is priced out to buy a home. Not ideal. However, check this out. The other stat in here in the, the white print, um, house prices have still jumped 13% year over year. So I know folks are saying, man, I want to do this and I may wait. If you can afford it today, again, house prices in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, there are exceptions. You know, There are communities like new home, new construction communities. However, as a whole, it's a really strong market. If you guys, I didn't find the stat for it, but I, I heard this on Monday. 
of the top 20 markets in America, they that's like the 80-20 rule. Those 20 markets, the declines in those markets, and it's the San Diego's, it's the Seattle's, it's the uh, Phoenix, it's the hot markets, the ones that have always been the ones that just accelerate really fast. So those are the ones that are having, you know, double digit, you know, uh, reductions in prices and double digits decline in home prices. The rest of the country, guys, it actually got a little better and it's only down like 3%. So yes, you might see the headlines like housing prices and blah, blah, blah. Look, that's the top 20 markets of which we are not falling in those like really high, the peaks and valleys. So just understand house prices here in the Metroplex have still gone up year over year, which is wild. So buying a house, guys, here's the other perspective. People are like, I'm not buying. All right, well, how about this? Six months ago, the list price was 450. And with all the, maybe it's not six, maybe this is a year, but nonetheless, it's a good stat. Uh, but about six months ago, earlier this year, list price was 450 and you might've had to overpay 50 grand to get it. We all saw that. It was, you know, early part of this year, but for sure all of last year. So you got home buyers now saying rates and I don't want to. Well, look, that four and a half rate that you have gotten earlier this year, your payment was 3,028. Well, check it out, guys. Now in today's world, you might be able to get that same 450 house maybe for 425. So in the event that you can do that, because there's a lot of deals out there right now for the right communities. Again, if you can find a house or a seller willing to make a deal, they're willing to do so at this moment. That's not a broad stroke to say it's everywhere. But if you can, check it out. Your payment's basically the same thing, even with a six and a half rate. So it's interesting for all those folks that think, I don't want to buy now. House prices are going down. That makes it the best time to buy. Yes, rates stink, but they're not forever. Uh, I still believe they would can will be coming down. And here's one other good news, guys. This is official. Well, we initially guessed about two months ago. We thought uh, jumbo limits would be set at 715,000. About a couple of weeks after that, we said, nah, just kidding. Maybe about 700. Well, it's official now. It's formally been addressed. The new loan limits to avoid jumbo financing are 726, 200. 726, 200. So 726, 201 is a jumbo loan. Underneath that, it's normal. So that's great for those higher priced homes. As always, guys, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Let us know if you have any feedback or anything you want us to cover in the future. And as always, have a great remainder of the week. Bye-bye.